let's make this very cute sewing espadrille shoes and we are going to get started with our embroidery part on the machine so what will you need to make a pair of shoes you are going to decide what fabrics you want to use and I've decided for demonstration purposes to work on this grey duck fabric my fabrics are pre-washed and I've decided on this nice blue lining so you will need two pieces of pre-washed linen lining uh, or cotton or whatever you want to use for your lining and then you can decide this is a great way to upcycle clothing like use a pair of old jeans or a jacket or anything so you can be creative what kind of fabrics you want to use but I'm working on the grey duck the other thing you will need is you are going to need your um, perforated cutaway or any medium weight cutaway stabilizer now I want to give you a great tip if you are working on a large hoop right I don't know if you sometimes feel that in the larger hoops right here in the middle it feels like it's a little bit loose when you once you hoop it like it's not tight enough to tighten up your hoop and make it um, nice and taut what you're going to do is you can take a piece of felt now you can see I've basically hooped this pieces of felt on my sides right in the middle where I want it to be more tight this is a great tip you can see at the back there's just a little piece in there and that's just going to help my hoop because I'm not working with thick fabric over here I'm just hooping my uh, perforated cutaway or your medium weight stabilizer so if you see that it's too loose over here you can make it tighter by adding this little pieces of felt at the sides so we are going to get started now this shoe was done in a large hoop so in a large hoop you are going to have one front panel and one back panel but if you've got a smaller hoop and you need to uh, do your design in a smaller hoop you will be having three pieces for your shoe so for a smaller hoop you will have one front panel and then your back panel is going to be in half and you are going to have two parts of your panel so there will be a neat joint we, which we will show you in the instruction files exactly how to do it now you get photo illustrated step-by-step -step instructions on how to make these shoes how to assemble them and there's a color chart this is only a suggested color chart telling you what color we think you should use the one after the other so you can be creative and change it to any color that you want to use it so, I'm going to get started by going over to the machine now and show you the files we are going to select. I'm working on the wonderful Baby Lock Solaris and I'm going to go into my embroidery screen and I'm going to select my little pocket and I'm going to go into my USB. Now you will see that there is um, the two front parts right so at first I'm going to select my first design right now I'm working in the nine and a half by 14 inch now at this moment I'm in the five by seven hoop you can see the little gray outline over there so you can see that this design is too big so I'm changing my hoop at the top in my information on page eight I'm going to go to frame size and I'm going to go to my nine and a half by 14 and select that and I'll press on OK now you can see my um, gray outline shows me that this is my embroidery area so I'm simply going to move my one front panel up and I'm going to add my second design right so I'm selecting the second design and I'm going to set that now you might want to know uh, is the one not the same as the other one this is basically a mirrored one although the machine looks the same so you can see on this side we have the little spool uh, without the needle and this one has got the spool with the needle and thread this one has got the uh, spool with uh, the needle and thread on the left side and the spool on the right side so it's basically but 
the middle part is actually exactly the same. Now we could not mirror our embroidery machine or the sewing machine simply because if you mirror that it would not look correct if um, the, the machine is mirrored because a real machine don't look like that. Alright, so this is my two panels. We are ready to start embroidering and I'm going to click on embroidery. So first, I'm just taking my hoop. I'm working with a um, bobbin thread, any bobbin thread you can use. I'm working with a 60 weight bobbin thread. I'm working with a polyester thread, but you can use rayon or polyester, it doesn't matter. And I'm using an 80 slash 12 needle. If you are using a thicker fabric, like a really thick denim, or um, this bull denim is the medium weight one, so an 80 slash 12 needle is perfect. But if you go for a um, thicker fabric then I suggest you use a 90 slash 40 needle which works great a sharp point needle working great on thicker fabric so first it's going to run out the outline to show me the placement for my duck This is showing me the outline of my first design or my first front panel and then my second one is going to be probably over here. So without stitching out my second one I'm simply going to take my piece of my duck and you want to make sure that you are facing the right side up, right? So right side up I'm just covering my first guideline stitch and it's my piece is big enough to stitch both of my panels onto the duck. So let's run the second outline so you will see the shape of the front panel on the duck. I'm going to go on now color by color until I've stitched out all the details on both of my panels and I'll be showing you how to line your panels before we do the back panels. We are now done with our embroidery almost. We have done the details 
on our two front panels and now what we are going to do is we are going to line our shoes and I'm taking my 100% cotton that's been pre-washed and I'm going to turn it right side down and I'm just going to cover my two panels now you will have to manually go back to your first panel because my machine is now ready to stitch my final um, step of the design to assemble my lining onto my front panel but then I'm going to go back manually on my screen and I will complete the last step of my first panel now ready to stitch out my final step of my first panel you will see that I've used a dark pink color to stitch on this is only for demonstration purposes when I'm going to measure that you can see exactly what I'm going to do but it's best to use a color that will match your base fabric which would be a light gray for this instant but then you won't be able to see it on the camera so I did it in pink but match your color of your base fabric. Let's stitch the last step of our first panel and finish up embroidering our front panels. done with the embroidery part of our front panels and at this stage you might want to ask well which panel is going to be my right and which is going to be my left I don't want to get confused I don't want you to worry about now that now this opening is going to give you the indication which foot is right and which one is left we'll be learning that very soon so now we are done with our front panels we still need to do our back panels but this one is finished now you can unhoop your project from the hoop and it's ready to go on to the next step so let's go and make our back panels it's now time to stitch 
our back panel and I've already pre-cut my pre-washed cotton linen and I've got the grey um, color of my medium weight duck. I've hooped my hoop with the medium cutaway stabilizer or a perforated cutaway and just because it's very thin inside of the hoop I added the pieces of felt to help me with the hoop. So we are doing our back panel in the large hoop so it's one back panel but if you are going to do your um, back panel with the smaller hoop this is where you'll be using two pieces to create one bigger piece because you will assemble it at the back so let's go to our embroidery screen and have a look at our back panels I'm going into the embroidery screen I'm selecting my little pocket and my USB flash drive now you can see that you've got like the long one panel which is uh, for the large hoop and then you've got two half panels right so this is the two panels that you will use if you've got a smaller hoop but if you've got the large hoop you will simply be using your large panels and I'm going to select my first one I'm in the nine and a half by fourteen inch hoop so I can see my parameters for my embroidery field and I'm just scooting my design a bit to the left now I need to add my second pattern and I'm collecting it from my USB flash drive and I'm simply going to select it I'm just going to make sure that they are apart now you want, don't want them to be too close because you are going to cut a seam allowance around your panel so you can move them out so that there's enough space on your fabrics on each side of your panels on both panels so that you can easily still do a seam allowance around it and we are ready to go into our embroidery screen so it's going to run our guideline for our first panel I'm taking my piece of grey duck and I'm making sure that my wrong side is down right side facing up I'm simply going to put my piece inside of the hoop making sure it's covering both sides I will now go color by color until I've stitched out all the details of both of my back panels and then it's time to line our panels and we'll be doing that We are now ready to do the lining. We've stitched out all of our little details on our panel, so let's line our panels. I've got my piece of pre-cut 100% cotton, and it's pre-washed as well, and I'm turning it right side down, and I simply want to cover my two panels, lay it flat on top, and we are going to stitch out the, the one panel um, first and then manually I will go to the other panel to complete the last step. We are now done with our back panels embroidery, we've lined the two panels and now we're ready to go on to our next step 
to prepare our panels before we can sew it onto our soles. But I just quickly want to show you something. Um, so I will be showing you how will you know the front part is right or left. We will get to that part. But I want you to already see with your back panels is that look at the openings, right? You can see that it's got like a curve and the top part is like more straight. So the curved part where the opening is goes onto the sole. So the straighter part of the shoe will go at the top and the curved one will go on to your sole. So this is the way you will know whether it's um, the top part or the bottom part of your back panel is just look at the opening and the opening needs to go onto the sole. So let's go and prepare our panels so that we can finally stitch them onto our soles. So I've went ahead and I cut my two front panels apart and I've got my back panel. So the first thing that you need to do is turn your front panel so that it's from the back side where our cutaway stabilizer or the perforated cutaway is. And then all we're going to do is we are going to trim the axis. You can like turn your scissors like this and it's really easy just go around right next to the stitch line and quickly trim away all of the axis stabilizer. I will do exactly the same for the back panel. Turn it around from the stabilizer side and let's go trim it. panels has been trimmed we need to cut it out but with a seam allowance so the first thing that you want to do is you want to turn it from the lining side and I'm taking two pins and there where my little opening is I'm inserting my pin at the start and the finish where the opening is Okay. The reason why I'm doing this is it's going to give me, if I turn it around from the stabilizer side, it's showing me where the opening is, which is really important because we need to measure this. So what I'm doing over here is simply marking where my opening starts and finish, right? And I can now remove my pins. What you need to do now is you are going to take your measurements and you want to measure five eighths of an inch, right? And this side, five eighths of an inch, and you are simply going to connect the dots, and then this is where the opening is. For the rest, you are just going to go a quarter of an inch right around. Now, if you are used to doing this, you can simply go around and eyeball it by cutting around. But I'm just showing this for those of you who are doing it for the first time so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. If you can eyeball this, you can simply go ahead and cut around it just quarter of an inch from your stitch line and at the opening five eighths of an inch
Once you measure it out, you're simply going to connect your dots and that will give you your cutting line around your panel. Always start to cut from the opening side, right? So that you don't forget and you go all the way down. So just go and you want to cut up until the quarter of an inch line. Don't go into the stitch line. And then on the 5 8 just going to cut again only up until quarter of an inch line. And now you can just go around keep on cutting on the quarter of an inch around your panel One last thing you need to do is you need to cut away some of the excess fabric because you don't want bulk on the ends when you turn it around. So you want to help your little corners over there to not be bulky. So all you need to do is trim close to the stitch line but not into the stitch line. Just taking away some of the extra fabric, right? You don't want to cut into this so that when you turn it around it's opening up. You just want to make sure you remove some of the bulk. You will do that on the four corners. Right, now let's go on to our front panel and also prepare our front panel. So from my lining side where I can see the opening I will take my pins and I'll insert it on the one end and insert it on the other end right turn it around and now I can just take my water soluble pen and I'm just going to mark so that I know this is where my opening will be and then I'm taking my pins out and I can now start measuring right same thing goes as with the back panel. You're simply going to mark it on the 5 8 of an inch line. Right. And then you'll just connect the dots. For the rest of it, you're just going to go quarter of an inch around it, simply marking it so that you can know where to cut. I'm simply going to connect my dots giving me a stitch line or a cut line around so that I know where to cut with my scissors you don't have to be precise it's just that you know where to cut and I always start from the opening side not cutting into the quarter of an inch line cutting up until the quarter of an inch line and now I'm going to go around it
now we've got two corners on our front panel and I'm simply going to trim away some of the bulk trimming away some of my fabric so it's nice and sharp without going too close so I can still turn it around our next step would be to take our patch bond and add it to the back of our panel so let's go and put our patch bond onto the back of our panels let's talk about patch bond so what is patch bond and why are we using it when we are making shoes now patch bond you will get a little roll of patch bond inside of your kit now patch bond is a interfusible webbing which means it's got paper on the one side and glue on the other side now specifically patch bond is a heavy duty industrial grade um, interfusible webbing so this is a really fantastic one it's one we use for our patches as well and the reason why we use the patch bond is basically we are going to fuse the patch bond between the lining and our outer fabric and that's going to give us a nice and sturdy shoe that is why our shoes can shape really nicely and they don't look floppy like usually um, fabric shoes look like they look absolutely wonderful so that is the reason why we are using the patch bond now inside of your instruction files you will get a PDF and it will tell you it's for size 7 or whatever size shoe you are using you will get your patch bond templates you can print them out if you don't have a kit or they will be inside of the kit and you are going to lay them down on top of your patch bond and you will cut exactly the shape <coughs> of your patch bond templates onto your patch bond now to make a pair of shoes you will need two of your back heel parts right of the back panels you will need two of the front panels which is going to be for your toes and then you will have heel support at the back of your heels where you are going to put an extra piece of canvas which I will show you so you are also going to cut two pieces of the duck or canvas this is just as extra support at the back so that it's not floppy so we do put an extra part inside of the shoe to make it even more sturdy so that is why I'm going to cut two of my canvas or my um, duck and then two of each one of my other templates right I already went ahead and I did cut out what we need for our shoe so I've got over here a piece for my heel I've got my heel part for my canvas or duck and I've got my heel support patch bond and I've got my front panel so I'm going to get started with the front panel first so what you want to do is you are simply going to take your patch bond now look at this when I do the placement now you're going to ask me but why is my patch bond so small people sometimes look at these templates and think well this is not going to fit me it's not supposed this is not the size of your actual shoe you can see that it's way um, smaller than your actual panel why is this because once you are going to fuse your ca um, lining and your canvas that you are you you've used for your base fabric right when you fuse it it really becomes a thickened almost like a plastic like canvas like for outdoors so it's really really hard to push your needle that you're going to need to sew it on top of your sole to sew that onto so that's why we leave an opening where the needle needs to go through so that we don't have problems with that so what I'm doing is I'm kind of like placing it like over here and what you want to do is remember the front part of your shoe needs to go onto the back part so we are going to sew over our front panel on this part and that is why I'm going to leave 5 eighths 
of an inch and you can take your measurements and you can make sure that it is 5 eighths. So I'm just moving it where it's from the top part 5 eighths of an inch right and over here if it's 5 eighths of an inch from here then it's perfect so I'm just placing it over there I'm going to take my iron and you need the hottest setting on your iron and preferably you should use no steam um, it's better to use no steam so use the um, no steam highest setting on your iron and you're simply going to start holding about six seconds on each spot just letting the patch bond grab onto the back of your lining really holding on to that I am in love with patch bond it's such an amazing product and it's the real secret recipe within our shoe making right so I'm just going to hold on like six seconds on each part and make sure that it's really grabbing on if you've got a press you can even press it with your press that's even better because it's nice even heat so now you don't want to pull off your paper part already now because it's very hot right can't even touch it so you want to let this cool completely because if you're going to pull it off while it's hot you will pull some of your glue at the back and then it's not as functional and it, you will have a hard time to turn your, uh, your panel inside out if it's still hot so I'm putting it aside and we are going to work on the back panel now now my back panel I need to remember I told you that the opening is the part that goes onto the base of my sole right so you can see that this one you want to kind of like also have it curved and the straighter part now think about it at the top at the bottom right is where my needle needs to go through so this is why I'm going to place it rather a little bit more to the top because the needle don't need to go through there and I'm going to make sure that I have at least three eighths of an inch around that and that's a good placement I'm the same from the side three eighths of an inch at the bottom and I'm going to start ironing it on with my maximum heat no steam just going to iron my patch bond onto my lining of my back panel you can hold it like for six seconds in one place just to make sure that it's really holding onto your panel. Now we need to insert our heel support, right? We need to put it in place over here and what you want to do is I'm going to turn it this side around all right so what you want to do is you first going to iron on your patch bond onto your piece of canvas so I'm just placing my patch bond on top of my canvas and I'm quickly going to also make sure that it's ironed onto the back of my duck canvas going to let it cool down a little bit and what you want to do now is you want to determine exactly where the middle of your panel is so what I'm doing is I'm going to fold that my edges where it was stitched is right on top of each other you can use some pins if you want to pin it in place to just make sure right? and you make sure it's right on top of each other and then when you fold it in half right? you can open that up I like to use pins but I first want to just determine where it was so what I do now is I'm just going to take my pins 
and I insert my pin because that's going to help me to line up my heel support at the back. So I'm taking the other pin and just making sure over there, so this is my middle of my panel. What I need to do now is I need to fold. It's difficult to fold with the paper. So I'm taking the paper off, but now you need to be mindful because you don't want to let the glue side, look how nice and glossy it is, stick to each other. So you just take the paper off and then you are going to put the um, side that don't have the glue, fold it in half, and you're going to take your pen and you kind of want, like want to just measure right in the middle, okay, like that, so that you can see the middle of your canvas. And now we are going to do the placement. So you want to do the curved part at the top because that is where you will need the support, right? So I'm placing the straighter part to go to the bottom and the curved part to go to the top. So what I do now is I'm going to gently take my paper of my patch bond, gently pull it off, right? Okay, you can see how nice and glossy that is, my patch and now I'm going to take my heel support and I'm going to place it almost at the top at the stitch line. Now why can I put it so high up? Because remember, you need to at least clear 3 eighths of an inch at the bottom because this is the opening. Can you see that? So this part will go onto the shoe, right? This part goes onto the shoe. So you want to line it up to the top because that's where you need, really need the support. Now I can pull out my pins and now we need to activate the patch bond at the back of our heel support. Now be very mindful because you do not want your iron to stick onto the glue but remember we don't have any patch bond over here so all I'm doing is just going from this side and just gently stay on top of the canvas just quickly activating my canvas. Over in the middle it's fine because there's no patch bond to grab onto at the top and the bottom because remember it's smaller than the actual pad. But on the sides be mindful. Uh, people sometimes ask me can you use a Teflon sheet? No you cannot because once the heat goes through the Teflon sheet the glue grabs onto the Teflon sheet. So just be patient and just quickly do it that way. In the middle no problem just be mindful on the edges. All right. And now I'm just going to let the school down a bit and we're going to take our front panel which is completely cooled by now and what I'm doing now is I'm gently going to take my paper back and I'm pulling it off and you can see my glossy part where my patch bond is right. And it's time for me now to start turning my pa uh, panel inside out. You want to be gently, you don't want the glue to grab onto the glue. So I'm just slowly starting to turn it around, right? I'm going to start turning it inside out gently, right? And once you start turning, you can already take your wooden tool, right? Or any turning tool. You can even use like a crochet pen and you will just start turning it around. If your lining grabs onto each other, just gently pull it aside. You hear that sounds over there? That's my patch bond trying to grab onto the lining side. But you just keep on going until you've turned it around completely. Right. So now I just gently go inside. Don't push too hard, especially on the corners that you've trimmed. You wanna you don't want to go right through. If the lining is holding on, you just give it a little pull and there it's loose, right? If you just start, you'll make it neat just now. Just pushing it out as much as possible, right? And then if you've got another neat um, tool that you want to push the points out or the corners out so that they look good, can also use one of your upholstery needles from the outside and just make sure you pull it up right 
See there I push too hard, I push through there at the back. You just want to be mindful and just push it like that. Alright, you don't want to push through your lining or anything. That's why I prefer the wooden tool actually. But here you can just neaten it up a bit and make sure that it's everywhere. That's good. Now, before we go and activate our patch bond, remember my lining and my front is still open, they still loose. So we still need to activate that, but before we can activate that, we need to sew our lining and our front panel to each other. So all you do is you'll just start on one edge and really fold it like that. It's kind of neat. I like to use this little quilter's pins, right? And I'm just going to fold in my lining so that the front is right onto the back. And I'm going to hold it in place with quilter's pins. And then when you're done, you can top stitch it with your sewing machine or you can hand sew it there at the opening. So we're going to close up the opening before we can activate the patch bond. But now let's go do the back panel as well. And it's time to turn my back panel around. Take your time on this, be patient. I always start from one side and first turn around the one side before I go on to the other side. It just helps. So once it starts turning, I take my wooden tool and I gently start pushing, alright? It's not that hard at all. Okay. Gently on the corners, you don't want to push right through, okay? And then I'm going to turn around the other side as well. So once it starts turning, you just take your wooden tool and you help it a little bit to start turning. Alright, and then you push out as much as possible and then with a finer turning tool you can help it, alright. looks pretty good so you can take your turning tool you can just neaten up those corners don't push too hard be mindful if you're taking a sharp object not too hard just neaten it up at the edges right all right and then same thing goes for this we want to take our lining and line it up with our front panel so I'm just lining it up from the back right nice and neatly taking my quilters clips holding it in place and I'm going to sew my opening so that I close it up so what we need to do now is either with top stitching you're going to close the opening or you can hand stitch it and then we will go on and we will fuse our front panel and our back panel by activating our patch bond. Let's activate our patch bond so that our lining and our front fabric are fused. You can see that it's still loose at this moment, right? If I pull it apart like this you can see that it's still moving. Right, so let's fuse our lining to our front panel or to our front fabric you can see that I've sewn it up if I used a little blanket stitch over there but you can use top stitching or just sew it on so all you're gonna do you're gonna go from the lining side because that is where you have added the patch bond so I'm coming from the lining side starting in the middle just starting hold it starting to iron it on And the moment it grabs onto my front fabric, you can see it becomes really neat. Now remember, the patch bond is smaller, so it will actually just fuse your middle part to the front part. I'm just fusing it, and once I'm happy, holding it about 6 seconds on each part. I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to fuse it from the front as well. And there it's nice and neatly fused, very nice and sturdy and 
let's fuse our back panel as well you always go from the lining side so I'm simply going to start in the middle and let it grab the lining onto our front fabric you can hold it six seconds in any space and when it's fused you can turn it around and you can iron from the front part now that we've fused our panels and we are ready to assemble our panels we need to do some measurements so that our front panel goes on to the back panel and we can sew it with our sewing machine before we can do the last step of adding it to our espadrille soles so remember what did we say the curved part is the part that goes onto the shoe and the straighter part is at the top so I'm turning my design so that the opening is at the bottom like this and this is the way it needs to go within the shoe now remember when I told you I will tell you where the opening uh, or which side is right or left where the opening is right this will go to the inside part of your shoe so if my opening is on the right then this is my left foot if my opening is on my left side then it's my right foot so I've got my left foot over here and this is the way that it will need to go in All right but now we need to measure first so I'm turning my front panel around and I'm going to take my measuring tape and if you're using a darker fabric you might want to use like a um, dressmaker's chalk or a piece of soap but I hope this will work I'm going to measure 5 eighths of an inch from the side just simply making this it's visible so I'm just going to make sure that I'm 5 eighths of an inch and I'll keep on measuring 5 eighths of an inch just for about up until here all right and I'll go to the other side and I'm going to do exactly the same just measuring 5 eighths of an inch right on my edge and that because that is where I will be putting my front panel to the back panel so now that I've drawn 5 eighths of an inch on both sides that is where the placement will be now remember this is I would put it and the opening side goes to the bottom so this is the way the shoe is going to go in so with that said I'm just turning this around and I'm going to take my back panel and I'm going to line it up with the 5 8 of an inch line like that right over there and um, you just want to make sure from this side that it kind of lines up here but you don't want it to go over so you're just gonna start over there I'm just gonna take a pin and I'm going to pin it and then I'm just going to make sure that it's exactly on the 5 8 right it's good and I'm just adding another pin over here on the 5 8 line And I'm going to go to the other side I'm going to take my back panel and I'm going to line it up on the 5 8 line I'm going to make sure it's not going over it's lining up nicely over there right on the 5 8 of an inch line and I will also take my pins and I will pin them in place right so now we are ready to go over to our sewing machine and we're going to stitch our front panel onto the back panel and then it's time to assemble it on the shoe 
I'm now in the sewing mode of the wonderful Baby Lock Solaris and the foot I'm using is foot N. Now this is my favorite foot to use when I'm doing the specific um, sewing the front part onto the back part because there's like a little groove on my foot and it gives me a nice guideline to work with. But you could use foot J or another foot that you prefer but I'm using N. Another very important thing about sewing your front part onto the back part is that you should use a hundred percent cotton thread which is nice and strong a 30 weight will do that your bobbin thread and your top thread is a cotton because you cannot use embroidery thread to stitch your um, front part onto the back part it will look very nice but the moment you put it on put your foot inside of the shoe this will tear loose right and you don't want that because you've already sewn your uh, top part onto your sole and then you will have to redo it so make sure that you've got the 100% cotton at this moment you can see that my needle position is right in the middle you can also check it manually and see that the needle position is right in the middle now if you did not know this if the machine is in the embroidery mode you will use this switch for going faster or slower with your embroidery machine but if you are in the sewing mode you can adjust your um, needle position with this switch right so if you look onto the screen you will also see that the needle position is now right in the middle and it's on 3.5 I want to move my needle position to the um, left right so that I've got a two millimeter stitch to the left of my guiding of the little foot so now we need to change that so I'm manually going to you can also do that on screen but I'm changing it to 1.5 which means it's going to stitch two millimeters to the left so let's go you are going to take your um, shoe like this and I want you to have it that your front panel is facing left so then what you need to do is you just simply need to turn it inside out so that it's nice and flat and you can work on it all you want to do is keep your little groove on the edge and you want to go slow don't go fast just go slow Keep on stitching. And when you get to the thicker part where the front panel and the um, back panel ends off, you can add a few back stitches just to make sure it's more secure. And then we just keep on stitching, guiding my little groove right on the edge. So we have now stitched our first um, line of stitches and we are going to go on and do our second one and all we're going to do is guide our little groove now on our first stitch line and that's all there is to it. Simply guiding my first stitch line through the groove, and that's going to give me another two millimeter stitch line to the left. And we are done. We are now going to take
take our top part and sew it onto our soles. Let's start with the fun part, the one that I like a lot. I absolutely love stitching the top part of the shoes onto our espadrille soles. Now, if you feel a little bit intimidated, don't fear, because there's so many th ways that you can make it easier for you. And it's so wonderful and forgiving, because at any time if you're tired, you can stop and you can continue and do it at your own pace. So I've got my top for ready stitch the front part onto the back part and we're ready to stitch it onto our shoe. I'm using a size 7 sole and I've got the nice thick ones I decided with my beautiful little toe flower. Now just to make sure how do you know which side is right or left you always look at the opening that you closed up all right and the opening will be on the inside part of your sole. So mine at this moment is on my right side, which means this is my left foot. So I'm working on my left foot. And the first thing you want to do <clears throat> is you want to turn it around and you want to line up your panels right on top each, of each other. So you're basically going to fold it in half. And I'm just going to put this little handy clips in there because it's really going to help me to fold it into half. So you basically divide your shoe, right, you can put an extra clip over there just to get started and we are first going to sew our toe flower or our front panel onto the toe flower. We'll get to that just now. But before we start I want to just talk about your foot. It's always a good idea that when you are going to, before you start stitching, because if you've got a broad foot, you will want your stitches to be right on the edge so you have more space for your foot. But if you've got a, a, a narrow foot, you would like to stitch in deeper, or if your sole is a little bit too big, then stitch in deeper, and that is going to make your foot or the shoe more snug and it won't be that loose. So I want you to put your foot on, on top of your sole and I want you to take a water soluble pen and trace your foot on your sole and that will give you the indication where you need to stitch. So you just got an idea to make it fit nicely I will go in deeper or I need to go right on the edge that's going to help tremendously. So if you are going to steep, stitch deeper then you will need 6.5 yards of our waxed espadrille thread. Now we stock these in a lot of different colors and this is totally optional what you want to do. Um, it's a personal choice whether you like some colored threads or you want to make it match with the sole. It totally depends. So I'm just showing you that there's a lot of different colored wax threads. I've already went ahead and I'm going to use a gray color. Um, Inside of your kit you get four needles, right? You get a smaller upholstery needle, you get a longer one. I work with the long one, that's my favorite one to work with. You even get a curved one if it's easier for you to work with the curved one. And then you get an ordinary needle and this is the one we are going to use for uh, our toe flower. When I'm stitching my toe flower, I'm using 100% cotton, a 30 weight cotton thread because I want it to be nice and strong. And I'm trying to um, match the color of my jute. So if you're going to stitch on black soles, then your cotton will be black. <clears throat> so I chose this creamish color to neatly hide in between of the jute. And that's where we are going to get started with. So I already put my um, cotton thread in my needle. I made a little knot at the end. And what I'm going to do now is just take my panel that's in half and right in the middle probably near the edge I'm just sticking my needle can you see that it's near the edge all right just sticking it through at first right already pulling it through just holding it like that don't let you not go through so I'm just going to let this lie down for a moment and all you do is you take your sole and you look at it and right in the middle over there right 
I'm just going to insert my needle to come out and then what you do is you simply lift it up like this and that's going to help you to exactly get the metal that's really easy now I'm going to take off this one clip just to help me a bit right? and I'm opening up my panel and I'm going to take my thumb and I put my thumb at the bottom and I'm going to lift it like that right you can see my thumb is now holding my fabric to the base and it's nice and right in the middle and what I want you to do is you're going to first from the bottom stitch um, just hand stitches up until the edge we will go the first row to the end come back and then row by row three rows I'm going to sew that right so you're just making small stitches hiding inside of the jute it's very forgiving you can't really see so I'm just going to keep on stitching my toe flower to my fabric by holding my fabric at the back with my thumb done with stitching my toe flower at the front so all you want to do is go row by row for three rows and make sure that at the top it's lying nice and flat that it won't pick up what I love about the toe flower is that it basically protects our fabric so that the toes don't form into the fabric and it looks like really professional so an another important thing that we do with our soles is when we are stitching them we add a stitch to the back which we will take out later but we like to call it the anchor stitch so we've got our um, panels anchored in the front anchored at the back and that's making pinning down and stitching it really easy so my panel is still fold in half and these clips are really handy to help you just a little bit it's like having extra hands so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the back so I took a piece of waxed espadrille in a pink color just taking a small piece and I'm not making a knot alright and all you want to do is go from right in the middle in your sole and just come up right like that and you're going to come up and just leave like a piece like this right and then what you want to do is you want to take your needle and right in the middle of the back panel if it's hard for you you can take some pliers to help you pull it through I'm just going insert right in the middle and I'm just then slowly going to pull it and that's going to pull it down like that and you want to go a second time while it's still loose we'll pull it um, when we're done so I'm going to go in again right just go in from the back go through my sole and I'm once again going to go a second time through and now I'm going to pull it so that it's actually going to hold it in place so that's all there is that's my anchor stitch you can go a third time if you feel it's still wobbly but that's pretty good so that's going to keep mine and I can cut it loose and you're going to leave this two pieces like this because it's just going to hold your shoe into place now you always want to start from the back side right from the heel side and I'm going to take my little cute novelty pins and I'm just going to move my clip a little bit to the front now so I'm at first just going to start right at the back and pin down you want to kind of lay your fabric flat and just pin it onto your sole and the reason why you start from the back is you don't want extra room at the back of your shoe it's better to have room towards the front and I'll show you once we pin down the heel part I'm first going to go from the front because it's better to have a little bit movement in the middle where your foot don't move a lot 
than to have it at the back or too much at the front. So I'm just bending down my fabric on the edge nice and neatly. It's really not hard to do. This one is actually helping me. It's lying flat already. Right, so I'm just going to pin up until about here, right? Okay. And now I'm going to start from my front part. Taking my clip off now. And just from the front, starting to pin it right onto the edge so it lies nice and flat so that we can get started with stitching our top part onto the base. So I'm just letting lying flat, pinning it down. If there's a little bit extra fabric, this is where you will um, have the little bit extra fabric, but this one is pretty neat. Not a lot of extra fabric. And I'll now start from the other side. So this side is pinned down. You can already see it looks like a shoe, ready to start stitching. So I'm also going to go from the front and just pin it down. And there, our shoe is neatly pinned down. Can you see how neat this anchor stitches is holding our heel in place? Because if you don't do that and you start stitching, some of the pins might lift up. But this gives us that extra stability, which is fantastic. I always start from my inside part of my shoe. And um, this is the part where you already have decided, well, I'm going to do a deeper stitch length or I'm going to just stitch onto the edge. You can decide depending on if you've got a narrow foot, a broad foot, or if you've maybe purchased soles that's too big. So just know that these soles at So My Soles, they run rather bigger than smaller. So if you are a half size, please size down, don't size up. So if you're a seven and a half, go for a size seven, don't go for a size eight. Um, but if let's say you've upsized and you want to make your shoe smaller then definitely this is what you're going to do stitch in deeper alright so I'm going to just take a pin out over here I'm going to start here with my fabric just about say, say half an inch off where those double layers are and I'm going to go from the inside now in the inside you can see there's like rows of the jute lying over there so I'm just going to go into one of those rows in the middle of kind of like right and I just want to come out right like that I've got a knot on my wax thread I'm using five yards so I've got a little knot and I'm slowly going to pull it up right. and you just want to make sure that it don't I um, hold it like that so that it don't catch on to your um, pins. Then if you're looking inside over there you can see I'm just simply going to hide the little knot in between the layers of jute right? You can hide it very neatly there you go so you can't even see it I'm just hiding it in the middle and now I can start from this side and you want to be mindful the way you are holding it so that the pins are not um, pinching you right? so I'm holding it just like this in my hand and I'm going to use my thumb, right, to hold my wax thread. So this is our first stitch where we came out. So I'm going to go on just next to it about half an inch, right, just next to it. And I'm going, you can see I'm like quarter of an inch on top of my fabric. So I'm going to come up and then this is my thread, right, you can see where it comes out. So this I'm going to do a blanket stitch where my finger was holding the wax thread I'm just putting it over the needle and you can pull it up so at first it's hard because the wax thread is long 
but each time you go back your thumb is going to hold on to that for your right so now you can see that the first stitch remember we came out in the sole and now this one looks like it's skew and this one is nice and straight when we are going to finish off you will see that this one that skew is going to pull up straight when we finish off with our last stitch so don't worry about that that's just our starting point and I'm just going to nice now if you feel more comfortable or you want exact measurement you can just go and already dot where you want your needle to go in and even at the top if you want it to be really precise but I kind of eyeball it because I've done it um, a lot of times and I'm just going to where you are at the thicker part just make sure that you are going through both now if it's too hard for you to do on the thicker part you can take your pliers you can see that how easy that helps me to go through the double layers on the side and you can pull it through and that's really helpful another great tip is you can take an awl and you can make like a little hole to help you to through and then I also like to use my clips if I want to just give my needle a little push that's also really helpful so those are all things that you can do to make it a little bit easier the wax thread really is a fantastic thread they don't get tangled easily but you can always just stop run your fingers through and detangle it at any stage if you feel that it's winding up all right so and that's all that it is you're just going to come from the bottom side put your thread around making a blanket stitch and you're going to pull it through so I'm gonna go a little bit faster and I'm going to meet you at the toe flower and I'll tell you how to stitch over the toe flower when you get to the toe flower you will see that you will make your last stitch like into an angle before going on to the toe flower so I'm just making my last stitch and then when you're turning from the toe flower side right you are not going right through your fabric because think about this this is two layers of wax thread you don't want to have the double layers of wax thread on top of your toes so just for decorative purposes my thumb is still holding my thread at the top I'm just sticking in my needle underneath my jute right so you can see how easy it slides it's only through my toe flower it's not through my fabric so you're just going to make a blanket stitch on top of your toe flower just to make it look nice and neat so I'm just sliding that through and it's really easy to stitch through it because it's not through the fabric as well so I'm just gonna go and complete my stitches over my toe flower and once again from the side you'll just go and stitch into your fabric then Go with an angle, stitching into the fabric again. And you will turn and you're going to continue with your blanket stitch on the side up until the anchor stitch and I'll meet you there. So we are now at the back. I've come all the way, keep on doing my blanket stitches and when I'm at my heel part before I go on to the last piece and we can end off we now need to just remove our anchor stitch because the job for the anchor stitch is done so I simply snip it and you can pull it out right and you can continue to do your blanket stitch and I'll meet you on the other side before we do our final stitch so that you can see how to finish it off I'm about three stitches from ending off so I'm just gonna go and finish my third last one making a blanket stitch right doing my second one 
as a blanket stitch. Now, what we need to do now is remember that stitch that is like was skew over there. So all you need to go and do, and do now is you're going to take your needle and go underneath that skew thread, right? And you're going to pull it up. And the moment you pull it up, can you see that? That it pulled it up exactly straight the way we wanted to do. And now to end off, all you're going to do is where well you pulled it up right through the fabric from the back side into the canvas. I'm going at the back of that stitch, just diving in to my sole, right? Any place on the sole. If you need a little bit of help, you can simply pull it through, right? Okay, see how neat this is on top now? And all you do is you're going to take your needle again and then next to this right next to where it came out you're gonna just go in and what you want to do now is you want to dive into your sole coming up right in the middle so I'm diving into my sole it's like diving you're gonna dive into your sole coming up for fresh air and you can see here I come here I come you can take your pliers it's easier and it's going to pull it through and it's right in the middle of your sole and all you have to do is snip it off snip it off and if there's any pieces of your thread you can just hide it in the jute and now you can start forming your shoe and we have done a great great job look at that now one last thing I quickly just want to tell you that people always ask me a great tip that I want to give you is let's say you've got a very high foot bridge and you're worried that it's going to hurt you on top of your bridge you can always let's say you are a size 7 shoe you will keep your heel part at size 7 and you can up your size for the front panel one size making it an 8 and a 7 back don't ever make your back panel bigger because then it'll slip off your foot but you can make this one one uh, size bigger and that'll give you a higher instep if you've got foot problems and you want to protect your foot from the instep making it even softer we've got heel huggers that you can use on the heels or you can use it on the instep you will see that there's like a glue at the back and this is washable again so you simply pull off your film at the back and then whatever it's going to be the most comfortable for you you can use it at the instep over there right or you can um, put it inside of your shoe and the curved part goes onto the bottom and again the straight part goes onto to the top just like you would have with your so you can decide where you want to place it you will simply pull off the film and that is going to um, help you to put it onto where you want it to be all right it's always a great idea to give someone a pair if you're going to make someone a pair of shoes as a gift to give them a pair of heel huggers because that's just for better fitment so remember you've got the power over how far you want to stitch it in or how near to the end you want to stitch it in just remember if you're making a deeper stitch length more thread will be required I've got a small little video that shows let's say it did happen that your thread was too short and you want to add some more thread how you will go to join the two pieces of thread but we have done a fantastic job. Look at this beautiful sewing shoe. Don't you think every sewer on the planet needs one like this?